Welcome to Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. We thank you for joining us. I am Lydia Odije Ochi with the news. A nation that is on the path of building a recovery and resilient economy despite daunting challenges that overwhelmed previous fiscal years is willing to face 2021's national demands on a budget summary of 15.5 trillion naira. This is also in addition to the ratification of its membership in the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreements to stimulate a rational economic regime and facilitate rapid development. Abubakar Usman Akwanga reports that guests on NTA Current Affairs Program Tuesday Live are optimistic that the two major instruments will serve as future stabilizers of Nigeria's economy. Nigeria, a nation of more than 200 million people and still counting, was plunged into a twin economic downturn in the last five years with impact of oil glut, COVID-19 lockdown and other internal unrest that took a wrong trajectory. Now the 2021 budget size of 15.5 trillion naira, tagged budget of recovery and resilience under the new normal, is aimed at addressing gaps created by these unpredicted factors, consolidating date on capital and recurrent expenditures and sustained social investment programs. Aside from uh, obviously the, the massive works that will continue on our roads, our bridges, our airports and seaports, obviously within the aviation budget, we also have captured there about 14 billion naira that will be going uh, to finally flag off the construction and make quite a bit of progress this year. A budget is typically a plan that you have cashed in figures. What it simply means is that we are able to match revenue against plans. Okay, for us to be able to uh, implement as, as to much as much as, as we have. There is effort in terms of the Ministry of Finance to see how to integrate the subnational into the budget process and, and that's why they came with the national development agenda. On the African common market agenda of the continent, guests on NTA Tuesday Life lauded the bold step taken by federal government to ratify the nation membership and express confidence of Nigeria occupying vantage position in the new economic dispensation. 54 countries have signed and then 34 countries have deposited the instrument of education at the African Union. It means that we are ready. We have the National Action Committee on the AFCTA. Throughout November up to, up, up to December, there were a lot of sensitization workshops and we were looking at various sectors of the AFCTA. No matter how you, you have the market, the people, if they cannot afford the product, then the, 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 the main essence of the convergence is defeated. Experts say the future of Africa is bright with potential windows to expand opportunities within the corridors of more than 1 billion population and a viable capital index of more than $3 trillion substantially to improve on growth and development profile of the continent. In Abuja, Abubakar Usman Afanga, NTN News. Few days into the year 2021, civil servants in Akwaibom State are calling on government at all levels to put in more, put in place more developmental policies that will enhance the Nigerian economy and not relent in the fight against COVID-19, which will guarantee the safety of workers in the light of the second wave of the disease for higher productivity. Evelyn Badu Ekpo takes a look at the prospects of civil servants in the year 2021. 
The year 2020 came with a lot of expectations to most civil servants, but almost truncated by the COVID-19 outbreak, which forced many, including governments, to lock down following a restriction order to curb the spread of the disease before the gradual opening of the economy. These, some civil servants say, took a toll on them both financially and economically as they had to cope with the current realities. A few days into the year 2021, civil servants are hopeful things will get better. Most government offices visited had few workers in relation to the SEDC regulation of resumption of senior workers. The civil servants assured of diligence to help implement government policies. We are planning to explore avenues within which we can carry on our functions within the limited resources. Whatsoever is my responsibility, I will put in my best to accomplish it. All of us must take personal protective measures in order to stay safe. The civil servants prayed for a viable economy while contributing their quota to national development. In Uyo, Evelyn Bedou, Ekpo, NCA News. Following the official flag off of the federal government's special public works program to empower 774,000 Nigerians across the country, Minister of State, Labor and Employment, Festus Kenyamo, has taken time to clear some of the gray areas surrounding the program. Festus Kenyamo was on NTA's Good Morning Nigeria along with other guests. Olusha Yadiago has details. We have allowed every local government to determine what they want to use the 1,000 persons for. In an urban area like Lagos, very urban area, you're not going to be clearing bushes. They may do, they may do traffic control in Lagos. Mm. Minister of State, Labor and Employment, Festus Kayamo, explaining the scope of the Special Public Works Program and clarifying some misconceptions concerning the scheme. He also speaks on the fairness of selection of the beneficiaries and the synergy between governments at the national, state and local government levels in execution of the program. Even though the federal government is the one hiring the persons, but the, federal, the president directed us that we should collaborate with different levels of government. So even state governments that have public infrastructure to maintain, the people are available to them to be used. All the guests on the program welcomed the development, describing it as the best global practice already tried and tested by some countries towards reducing rural poverty. Uh, if we are able to do this every year, for instance, we can be sure that we will we'll not just be expanding the economy, we'll be increasing our GDP. Aside from special public works program and economic sustainability plan, you also have what we just launched last week, the National Social Housing Program, where we're going to build 300,000 homes, creating 1.8 million direct jobs for, for young Nigerians. After several months of delay, the extended special public works program is engaging 1,000 unemployed vulnerable persons in each of the 774 local councils in the Federation as part of the federal government economy sustainability plan in response to COVID-19 and poverty eradication in Abuja, Lushaye, Adiagbo, and C News. Five newly elected non-permanent members of the United Nations Security Council have pledged to uphold the tenets of the council. Representatives of the countries made this known in a flag-raising ceremony to mark the start of their two-year terms at the UN headquarters at Debola, Brooklyn Sunday, reports. The United Nations Security Council has 15 members, five of them permanent, while the other 10 are non-permanent members and are usually elected for two-year terms by the General Assembly on a regional basis. Under the UN Charter, all member states are obligated to comply with the Council's decisions. National flag of the, the five the members Virginia. represent Mexico, India, Ireland, Norway, and Kenya, which defeated Djibouti in the contest for the seat available for the African group. We will listen. We will speak up boldly for Africa, for small island developing states, for the global south, and for all countries great and small. Protection of civilians and climate and security will be our guiding priorities. We will not shy away from raising our voice against the common enemies of humanity like terrorism. 
a new voting arrangement was adopted, taking into cognizance restrictions in place due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Across the world today, we know that there are millions of people living in fragile contexts that risk being pushed over the edge. We will uphold multilateralism with the firm conviction that it is the cornerstone of the global order. The Council's non-permanent member stamps will end on 31st December 2022. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. Following the retirement of Justice Ishak Bello as Chief Judge, High Court of the Federal Capital Territory, President Muhammad Buhari has approved the appointment of Justice Salisu Garba as the Acting Chief Judge of the FCT High Court. The statement by the Director of Information of the National Judicial Council, Soji Oye, indicates that the Acting Chief Judge has been sworn in today by the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Ibrahim Tanko Muhammad. Details in our subsequent bulletins. Justice Ahmed Mohammed of the Federal High Court Abuja has ordered counsel to the All Progressives Congress and that of Edo State Governor Godwin Obaseki to file their final written addresses to enable the court to deliver its judgment within the stipulated time. He stated this after the defense team closed their case. Correspondent Olabo de Arewa was there. The pre-election matter was filed by the All Progressives Congress and one of its members in Edo State, William Sedobo. They are seeking the disqualification of Governor Godwin Obaseki from participating in the 2020 Edo governorship race, alleging that he submitted false certificates to INEC while filling his form EC9. At the resume trial Wednesday, Obaseki's counsel, Ken Mozia, senior advocate of Nigeria, called another witness, Professor Ehosa Osagi, who tendered his own bachelor degree certificate from the University of Ibadan and told the court that from his own experience, he observed that since the UI certificates are larger in size than the A4 paper commonly used in making photocopies, making copies of such certificates might leave out some of the information on such certificates. He also testified that he attended the University of Ibadan for three years, just like the first defendants. With the PDP and Governor Baseki closing their cases this Wednesday and INEC not calling any witness in support of his case, the judge ordered parties to exchange their written addresses so that they could adopt him on Thursday. We came in prepared to do battle. We have done it. And we expect that we should win. That's the confidence we have. So the idea was to give the court enough room and give us enough time, at least a little bit of time, to prepare our respective addresses. Olabo Derewa, NTA News. Time now to join the Center of Excellence for more on Nationwide. Dotun will guide us. Dotun, over to you. Thank you, Lydia, and many thanks for joining us in Lagos. Nigeria's trade policy on inter-regions has contributed immensely to the development of economies of partnering countries. The involvement of the largest economy in Africa in the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, economic experts say, will further expand Nigeria's market and promote trade facilitation within the continent. Abaladi Salami reports. The African Continental Free Trade Area, AFCFT, is an instrument designed to promote an all-inclusive and sustainable development across the continent with a view to boost intra-African trade. A continent with an economic value of $3 trillion and a market of 1.2 billion people. No doubt, Africa's largest economy and the most populated in the continent, having the right policies in place, stand a more better chance than any other multinationals in trade facilitation. Revenue that will be coming from uh, from, from local economy, talk about uh, federal inland revenue service, and all other state revenue is expected to increase significantly. And more importantly, we're going to be seeing an expanded manufacturing sector. 
Taking advantage of the large market's size and huge scale of operations in the macroeconomic segment of the market to drive an increased production capacity in the agro-allied and other mineral resources sector, economic analysts submit will serve as a catalyst for revenue growth. In the ICT e-commerce, we also have very good advantage. So in the service sector generally, including trading, when it comes to retail trade, I don't think there's any country in Africa that can stand the entrepreneurial capacity of Nigerians when it comes to trading. Accelerating Africa's industrial development uh, objectives and Africa's industrial development action plans is very important for the purpose of uh, reconfiguring our supply chains. While Nigeria is increasing its capacity in the export of goods and services, both foreign and domestic, the intra-African trade agreement, as part say, should be seen as a mechanism that presents several opportunities to stimulate economic growth. As the nation remembers the sacrifices made by gallant officers and men of the Nigerian Armed Forces, Lagos State Governor Babajide Songwulu has reiterated the commitment of his administration to bring succor and relief to members of the Nigerian Legion and the state. Governor Songwulu stated this at the launch of the Nigerian Armed Forces Remembers Day emblem and appeal fund in Lagos. Musa Toliat reports. The Armed Forces Remembrance Day celebration is an event members of the Nigerian Legion look forward to. Lagos State Governor Babajide Sonwolu lauded the selfless service of the Armed Forces to protect the territorial integrity of the country. He, however, promised to support dependents of ex-servicemen who paid the ultimate price to keep the nation safe. As a government, we will continue to modestly support and identify um, with your costs. Um, we will continue to ensure that we can bring about soccer, we can bring relief to the very gallant um, officers and men that have served this country at one point in time or the other. Chairman and Deputy Commandant General of the Nigerian Legion Legal State Council, Fola Akondi, appeals to Governor Sawolu to look into other areas of empowerment for the widows of ex servicemen orphans and disabled soldiers. And this empowerment is usually made possible by the good donation of the government. We also appeal to our amiable government to look into other types of the Nigeria Legion in the United States, most of which we are preaching to your office. The launch of the emblem and appeal fund is one of the main events of the Armed Forces Remembrance Day celebration, which ends on January 15 every year. In Lagos, Musa Toliad, NTA News. And that's it from here. Let's now take our first break. Nationwide, we'll be back with Verem Ije in Makodi. <music> the greatest assets the country has at the moment. It is therefore not surprising that the administration of President Muhammad Buhari is strategically responding to the yearnings of the youth through multiple projects and programs. Youth Entrepreneurship Support Years by Bank of Industry, the Youth Investment Fund by the CBN and several other conditional cash transfer programs. Recruitment of 774,000 social workers, majority of whom are youths. 
and so many other projects that are beneficial to youths directly or indirectly. If the administration can do all this, definitely with a degree of patience and time, they can achieve more. Nigerian youths must come together to say no to terrorism, no to vandalism, and no to all disruptive tendencies. Hashtag Youth for Greater Nigeria, pacifying the youths, unifying the nation. A new edition of TV Guide is out with special focus on the game changer, His Excellency Governor Abdullahi Suley of Nasarawa State. Broadcasting in a digital economy, Maxwell Loco gives an insight. This edition also features Nancy Naji of AIT, a name synonymous with business. Meet the NCDC boss, Dr. Chikwe Ihekrasu. TV Guide, your indispensable companion, also explains the relevance of social media in the modern society. Meet some TV professionals who have impacted their spaces and other inspiring stories in sports, entertainment and lots more. Grab a copy at the vendor near you or NTA stations nationwide. TV Guide, your indispensable companion. The new year begins. We here at MTA cannot help but look back on a challenging year that has been filled with many lessons. The most important of all being a renewed gratitude for the continuous support of our sponsors, our clients, government at all levels, corporate bodies, advertisers, religious bodies, civil society groups, political parties, businesses and manufacturers, and you, the viewers. As we cross the finish line together, the celebration of new beginnings would simply be incomplete without you there. And we look forward to sharing the coming year with you. Here's to an excellent year ahead. Good evening and welcome to Makudi for the continuation of Nationwide. As part of efforts towards curbing crime in the state, no fewer than 200 persons have been arrested for various crimes by the Benue State Police Command in the outgone year. Briefing newsmen in Makudi, the Benue State Commissioner of Police, Mohamed Garba Mukadas, says the fight against crime is a continuous one which must be supported by all as the force is determined to bring crime to zero level. Sandra Dowesi Akeme has the details. In times past, Benue State has had its own share of security challenges ranging from cultism, armed robbery, internet fraud, communal crisis, and of recent kidnapping. However, the year 2020 seems to be a different ballgame as the Benue State Police Command had taken the war against criminality to their doorstep and has brought relatively peace to the state. While parading 83 criminal suspects for various crimes before newsmen in Makudi, the State Commissioner of Police, Mohamed Garba Mukada, said the command recovered 13 guns, 5 knife ammunitions, 20 cutlasses and knives, 5 cartridges, and the release of over 10 kidnapped victims within the year under review. In the year 2020, we have prosecuted not less than 200 cultists. We have been arresting, identifying the cultists, arresting them and prosecuting them. And the law has been working on them. Mr. Mokadas commended the commitment of the Benue state government in complementing their efforts towards fighting crime. I appreciate the good people of this state for their conduct and cooperation with the police during the festivity and assure you that the command is committed to the fight against crime. The commissioner assured that the command is determined to reach the states of criminal elements. The Benue State Police Command therefore appealed to the general public to avail the police with useful information on criminal hideouts that will lead to the arrest of criminals in the states. In Makudi, Sandra Dorisi, Akeme, NTA News. 
Residents of Makudi, the Benue state capital, have applauded the next level agenda of President Muhammad Buhari, which has led to massive infrastructural development being undertaken across the state. Correspondent Husseini Issa Mohammed has an overview of some viable projects executed by the present administration in the state. The report. The year 2020 witnessed some challenges as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, but in Benue State, it is not entirely all about the pandemic and the biting recession as so many developmental projects took place in different parts of the state. For instance, the federal government awarded and completed the 4.6 billion naira comprehensive rehabilitation of Mokuri New Bridge, which suffered structural defects. There was a lot of accidents, but now we realize that the road is it's not congested. We are enjoying the road. We compare how the road is before. So we are enjoying it. The road is very smooth and perfectly. And in the Bino South Senatorial District, construction of the Tupo Oweto Road is completed, while the Oweto Bridge linking Nasarawa State has also been completed in addition to Oju Yehe Road, which is also awarded by the federal government. Also, other roads under construction by federal government in Benue State include Lafia Mokudi Dual Carriageway, Mokudi Naka Adoka Road, and Mokudi Alide Otubo Road. Electricity supply has significantly improved in Benue State, while the federal government has inaugurated a newly established solar hydropower plant located within the Federal University of Agriculture, Mokudi. Electricity supply recently has improved a little bit from what used to be, because at least now the number of hours we are having electricity, we are seeing light, is now more than the number of hours we are not seeing light. There's a little improvement in the electricity supply presently compared to the past. In the education sector, federal government had in the year 2020 established two tertiary institutions in Benue State, which include Federal University of Medical Sciences, Otoko, and Federal College of Education in upper local government area of the state. In Mokudi, Hussein Mohamed Issa, NTA News. And in this next report, Benue State Governor Samuel Otom has restated his resolve to sustain understanding among the three arms of government in the new year 2021. The governor indicated this at a new year dinner party he organized for officials of the executive, judiciary and legislatures and other top officials at the government house Makudi. Charles Abba has the details. The decorations at the Lantanese Court of Government House Makudi, venue of the New Year dinner party organized by the Benue First family for top functionaries in the three arms of government, was one that befits the caliber of people for which it is meant. Governor Samuel Otom, who noted that the outgoing year 2020 presented a number of challenges, expressed optimism that the year 2021 would be better. The governor restated the resolve of his administration to abide by the rule of law and the essence of separation of powers among the three organs of government. The executive, the legislature, and the judiciary in the state are not as the family of the state. They do not interfere in any arm of government. Senator Okejev, who lauded the governor for his leadership qualities and the effective manner he is tackling COVID-19 in the state, appreciated God for the discovery of vaccines for the virus. We call on our scientists to ensure that we don't have uh, substandard vaccines uh, plumped on, 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 on us by people who want to take advantage of the problems to make this money for themselves. The Deputy Governor, Benson Abon, and his wife, Justice Mary, Speaker, Benue State House for Assembly, Titus Uba and his wife, the Chief George and his wife, and other eminent personalities and their spouses grace the occasion. In Makudi, Charles Abba, NTA News. That's it from Makudi. Is back to you, Lydia in Abuja. Good evening. Many thanks, Varen.
The Department of State Security Services has advised the public not to be gullible to job racketeering as the DSS is not conducting recruitment for job seekers. A statement by its public relations officer, Dr. Peter Afunanya, warned fraudsters to desist from the criminal act or face appropriate sanctions. He says DSS does not demand for money as criteria for recruitment but conducts such exercise based on the applicant's merit. More on security reports. The Minister of Defense Bashir Salihi Magashi retired says that Nigeria's Defense Space Administration to be upscaled with supply of equipment from the U.S. Space Force to enhance its capabilities to support the fight against insecurity in the country. The minister disclosed this while hosting a delegation led by the Secretary U.S. Air Force Barbara Barrett at the Ministry of Defense Headquarters, Ship House, Abuja. The minister notes that effective space management by the Defense Space Administration is critical to the ongoing operations by the Nigerian Armed Forces and other security agencies in the effort to eliminate the remnants of Boko Haram and other criminal elements. He appealed to the U.S. Secretary to speed up the release of some Super Tucano aircraft procured by the federal government. A statement by the Special Assistant on Media and Publicity to the Minister of Defense, Mohammed Abdel Kadri, says the visiting head of the U.S. military delegation, Barbara Barrett, is the fourth woman and 25th to occupy the position as Air Force Secretary. Meanwhile, the military in the year 2020 rescued over 1,000 abducted victims, including the Kankara school children in Katsina State. In this special report, defense correspondent Ismail Musa examines some of the major highs and low moments of the armed forces in the past year. It is a bright, busy day at the Nigerian Army Super Camp in Northeast Nigeria, and these highly mobile combat-ready troops keeping an eagle eye on the Northeast, having the year under review eliminated several terrorists, destroyed criminal cell locations, and rescued many abducted victims. With different joint military operations ongoing in different parts of the country, records from the defense headquarters show that in 2020 alone, the armed forces rescued over 1,000 kidnapped victims, including the Kankara school children. These achievements were facilitated by upskill training activities, procurement and production of arms and equipment, deployment of troops and platforms to various theater operations. While commending the feat recorded, President Muhammad Buhari in his new year broadcast noted that the nation's security apparatus must strategize to combat the current crime wave. Some of the key priority areas will direct our attention and strength to include re-energizing and reorganizing the security apparatus and personnel of the armed forces and the police with a view to enhance their capacity to engage, push back, and dismantle the operations of both internal and external extremists and criminal groups waging war against our communities in some parts of the country. Typical with operations, there were low moments. Troops paying supreme sacrifice, including the ambush and killing of Colonel Ahirubako, who was posthumously promoted to the rank of a brigadier general. Well, I commend your efforts. We must redouble our efforts to completely eliminate all acts of insurgency, kidnapping, banditry, separatism, and other forms of security threats from every inch of our beloved country. As the nation and the military march into the air, the defense headquarters appeal to the public to see the tax of securing Nigeria and Nigerians as a collective responsibility by providing constant credible intelligence report to security agencies. This is to enhance proactive rather than reactive operations. Ismail Musa, NTA News. Thanks, Ismail. More on security. Defense Industries Cooperation of Nigeria, DICON, is re-strategizing towards producing more arms and ammunition, among other logistics, through local content development initiative. 
This is to re-equip the Nigerian armed forces with sufficient hardware for sustained fight against insecurity. Suleiman Abdullahi Rigachuku tells us more on the retreat to that effect by the corporation in Kaduna. Based on the presidential order for the Nigerian armed forces to look inward in the provision and procurement of military hardware, Defense Industries Corporation of Nigeria, DICON, has imbibed the initiative of local content development. National security demands a new priority. This strategic meeting of principal officers of the corporation is to take stock of prospects of local production of military and paramilitary hardware and plan to reposition the industries through innovation and local content application, taking into account the role of top management personnel. <laughs> Increased funding for research and development, prudent management of resources, team spirit and collaboration. Director General of the Corporation, Major General Victor Ezugu, says will continue to be the focus of the industry as it goes ahead to support the ongoing fight against insurgency, banditry and other crimes through hardware. This year, we are looking forward to two major activities of DICON. The first is that we are looking forward to commencing the DICON Institute of Technology by September. Secondly, there are other areas of new products. Some of them include drones and other uh, arsenals of war that we are hoping that will support the armed forces in bringing the war against insurgency in the northeast and other parts of the country to a logical conclusion this year. These senior officers of DICON are expected to cross-fertilize ideas in the next couple of days on how to further strengthen the industry towards achieving the desired change this year. Suleiman Abdullah Hirgachkun. More on security as we join Chinyere in Enugu for more reports. Hello, Chinyere. Thank you, Lydia, and welcome to Enugu. The need for Nigerians to embrace community policing as a lasting solution to the security menace in the country has been re-emphasized. This is contained in a new book titled Effective Policing and Security in Southeast Nigeria, written by a retired Deputy Inspector General of Police, Dr. Celestine Okoye. James Opare Kocha reports. It is always very refreshing and exciting when a retired person put down in a book form his or her experience in his field of endeavor with the aim to help in the society. So it was with the presentation of the book entitled Effective Policy and Security in Southeast Nigeria. Presenting the book, the author and retired Deputy Inspector General of Police, Dr. Celestine Chinweze Okoye, said the over 260 page book captures his years of experience with the Nigerian police force and profile solution on the country's security challenges. This book on the effective police and security in Southeast came up as a child of necessity. And it was state governor represented by the Secretary of the State Government while unveiling the book said the state set up the forest guard with the aim to secure the states up to the farms and the forest. We will support you. We will provide security for you. Because we know that Enugu is the homeland of every woman. The Commission of Police Enugu State, company of other senior police officers, said DIG Okoye, being a seasoned police officer with vast experience, has all it takes to offer suggestions through the book on security matters. The book will be a reference point in all these regions considering the basic you know, security ingredients being pointed in the book. In Enugu, James Oparekocha, NTA News. In a bid to support the federal, state and local government's efforts in boosting security within the country, a group in Enugu State has presented two patrol vehicles and other security gadgets to a vigilante group in Ibuese North local government area of the state. The group, while presenting the patrol vehicles, maintained that security is everyone's business. Chidima Madu reports. That was the presentation of two patrol vehicles to Iweza North local government chairman who received the vehicles on behalf of the neighborhood watch. 
the beneficiaries. We are grateful for this gesture shown by their people, Enugu, Izikoba, sons and daughters in diaspora, and pray that God should protect and bless them for putting resources together to boost security within the council area. They are most interesting on labor to watch because last time they are fearing to come back home because of kidnappers. I take my, my old heart. Uh, see God make bless them one by one. The local government chairman and other government functionaries thanked the benefactors for meeting the security needs of the people, which will bring development to the area. What I've uh, done is uh, a huge support to security of uh, Ibo North. And uh, you know, without security, there will be no development. The impact is overwhelming. And uh, we appreciate our guys over there. The Umwe Nugezi Koba in Diaspora previously in 2019 gave out motorcycles, which was distributed in 36 villages within the council area. We just want to use the opportunity to support them in whatever they are doing to see that Igbeze North is great in future. I know what security is all about. We value that so much. They advise the Igbeze North Neighborhood Watch to be more cautious and not to abuse what was given to them in Enugu, Chidima, Madu, NTA News. And that is it from Enugu. Nationwide continues in Abuja after this commercial break. Do stay. Kids, we here at NTA cannot help but look back on a challenging year that has been filled with many lessons. The most important of all being a renewed gratitude for the continued support of our sponsors, our clients, government at all levels, corporate bodies, advertisers, religious bodies, civil society groups, political parties, businesses and manufacturers, and you, the viewers. As we cross the finish line together, the celebration of new beginnings would simply be incomplete without you there. And we look forward to sharing the coming year with you. Here's to an excellent Excellent year ahead. From dusk to dawn, 24 hours a day, NTA International is with you. In your living room, office, and everywhere, anywhere. We provide a company you desire in terms of balanced and up-to-date news, programs, and the best of entertainment. Tune in to DSTV Channel 251, Go TV Channel 91, Freeview Channel 264, or live streaming via www.visiontv.co.uk. Application for iOS or Android. You can also see us on Facebook and YouTube for quality content on the go. NTA International, Africa's window to the world. Life can be very eventful. We curiously expect things to happen even when we don't know what. Our human nature makes us like and repost lots of information. Some are unverified, inciting anger and hate. Sometimes innocently, other times the urge to break it first. This, in most cases, has caused destruction in many nations. Our news station brings to you news and happenings seven days a week. News at 10 a.m., news update at 11 and 1 p.m., news desk at 3 p.m. and 6 p.m., and late evening news at 11 p.m. Follow us on any of our platforms and keep abreast of events and current affairs within and outside our shores. We are on DSTV Channel 419, Go TV Channel 46, Star Times Channel 101, and Free TV Channel 703. Join us.
Thanks for staying. Nationwide continues in Abuja. NATO COVID-19 update. Some 1,354 new cases of coronavirus have been recorded in 20 states and the FCT, increasing the total number of confirmed cases to 92,705. In the breakdown of these 1,354 new infections, Lagos has 712, the FCT has 145, Plateau 117, Quara 81, Kaduna 54, Sokoto 39, Oyo 38, Rivers 37, Gumbi 21, Enugu 20, Aquaibom 16, Bauchi and Delta 14 each, Ebony 13, Anambra 9, Taraban Edo confirmed 8 each, Kano 3, Oshun and Ekiti 2 each, while Ogun has 1 new case. The FCT, Lagos, Kaduna and Plateau states are still leading in number of cases per state chart as active cases increase to 14,990 across the country. Number of recovered and discharged patients also increased to 76,396, while 1,319 have unfortunately died from COVID-19 complications. A ray of hope among operating businesses in Kano as the federal government support 59,000 people with grants under the Survival Fund scheme. Our Salisu reports that this is part of the economic sustainability plan designed to support Nigerian citizens. The outbreak of COVID-19 in Nigeria has drastically affected all sectors of the economy, leaving many people whose livelihood depend on daily income in despair and want. It was against this backdrop, the federal government came up with a number of interventions to minimize the impact of the pandemic. The Survival Fund scheme, therefore, is designed to support micro, small and medium enterprises to pay the salary of their staff for a period of three months due to the vulnerability caused by COVID-19. The uh, federal government has really helped and uh, about 59,000, if you add the numbers, are the people that will benefit in Kano. And uh, apart from that, the amount to be spent in Kano alone is almost 3 billion. Haji Amarias Nusi Bayero, one of the beneficiaries, commended the federal government for the transparent manner it is executing the scheme. She said, with support such as this, economic growth and jobs are sustained as nine of our workers are under the payroll. It really helped and assisted us so much because if not because of it, we have to start looking for a way to alleviate their sufferings and to help them. Other beneficiaries described the initiative as timely. We find it difficult during that period, but since government has intervened and uh, we are among the beneficiary, we are very very happy. I'm very happy. I'm thank to, uh, to the Mr. President and the federal government. The hope of Haji Amaria and her likes is for the federal government to extend the program, which they say its impact to economic situation of the country cannot be quantified. In Kano, Awal Salisu, NTA News. And as part of efforts to reduce the hardship faced by the poor and vulnerable occasioned by the novel coronavirus pandemic, the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development has directed the immediate enrollment of more than 8,000 households in Kano State. Yahana Suhasan Barao reports that the beneficiaries who are to receive 5,000 Naira monthly stipend were drawn from Taraoni and Nasrawa local government area. Yes. The outbreak of coronavirus pandemic is one of the disasters that impacted negatively on the livelihood of many in Nigeria, with the poor and vulnerable mostly affected. For instance, in Kano State, Nasarawa and Taroni local government areas were reported to have households who suffered both socially and economically. To reach out to those affected in order to cushion the effects of the COVID-19, the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Sadia Umar Faru, directed the Conditional Cash Transfer Unit in Kanu to a rural household in the most affected local government areas of the state. So far in the history of cash transfer in Kanu, 
uh, this is one of the major uh, tremendous uh, wood development we receive for one local government to have 7,000 beneficiaries at a starting point. Indeed, Alheri Yazo to Kanu. 30-year-old Hawa Adu is lucky to be among the households that will benefit from the benevolence. Hawa said bringing such initiative to her doorstep is a sign of transparency in governance and the commitment of the present administration to support the people at the grassroots. I will use the money to support my family, especially my children education. For Hawa and her likes like Maimunatu, whose joy knew no bounds, their hope is for the federal government to extend the gesture to many in their area. In Kanu, Yohana Sambaro, NTA News. Meanwhile, 2,600 women benefit from 20,000 Naira card support in Nasarawa State by Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development. Joshua Kigbu reports that selected women from five local government areas collected the amount at a ceremony in Lafia. Minister of State Science and Technology Mohammed Hassan Abdullahi says the Buhari administration is committed to uplifting the lives of rural women. Beneficiaries promised to use the money judiciously. Now, stakeholders in Nigeria's entertainment industry say regulation of content remains a key strategy, both in the recovery from COVID-19 derailed programs and repositioning the industry for business in the new year and the face of COVID-19. Guests on NTS Good Morning Nigeria made the suggestion while discussing the topic, Entertainment Industry Outlook for 2021. Again, Olusheya Adiago reports. With accelerating structural challenges and trends facing the industry owing to COVID-19, Nigerian comedians Ojo Oladipo Dino and Ogunshino Ayodeji Samo, popularly known as Still Ringing Comedy Doe, believe the pandemic came with its own lessons. The paradigm has shifted completely. Coronavirus has made many of us content producers now. Agreeing with the Still Ringing Doe film producer and director, Happy Juliana Uchendo says, the industry is adopting new strategies to keep the industry alive and striving again. So we're looking for the best in 2021 for the entertainment industry, both the cooperative supports and what have you. For Professor Alex Asibo, President Society of Nigeria Theatre Artist Sonta, there is already a renewal of focus and a more targeted approach to customer engagement, stressing on regulation of content. Regulation will not only improve quality and content, but also keep away bad content. The still ringing do ended the program, doing what they know how to do best. Father, we thank you. Hello, in Abuja, Ubushaye, Adiagbo, and News. President Muhammadu Buhari joins the Nigeria Labour Congress, NLC, and Nigerian workers to celebrate pioneer president of the Congress, Hassan Adebayo Sumonu, on his 80th birthday. In a statement by Special Advisor to the President, Media and Publicity, Femi Adeshina, President Buhari affirms that the former Secretary General of the Organization of African Trade Union Unity left a strong legacy in the public service and fought diligently for an improved welfare of the Nigerian worker. Institutionalizing a national minimum wage and minimum pension scheme and consistently negotiating with public and private sector employers on better packages for workers. As the identical twins turn octogenarians, the president extols their courage and discipline in always accepting to serve the nation, believing that their knowledge and experiences will continue to inspire many into public service and pressure groups which continue to work with governments in fostering development. President Buhari prays for good health and longer life for Sumonu and his brother, Sumonu and his brother Hussein. In another development, President Muhammad Buhari has joined sport lovers 
family and friends to celebrate Christian Chuku on his 70th birthday, describing him as a multi-talented player whose contributions led to the development of sports in Nigeria through the provision of technical leadership for national teams. In a statement by a senior special assistant to the president on media and publicity, Femi Adeshina, the president commends efforts of the former captain of Rangers International Enugu in strengthening the local league, which has over the years been a major feeder of the national team and produced players that have featured in some of the best teams and championships in the world. The president prays for improved health, strength, and longer life for the former Super Eagles captain. We now go over to our sports text for some sports news. Welcome to Sports Update. I am Badi Adile. Let's begin by letting you know that the Nigeria under 17 football team, the Golden Eaglets, are getting set to take on their Ivorian counterparts in their opening match at the Wafu B under 17 championship in Lume, Togo. Coach Fatah Mo's boys, who concluded their magnetic resonance imaging test on Tuesday night, say they are gunning for the three points. Meanwhile, Nigeria Zenyimba International are currently taking on Almeric of Sudan as the second leg of their CAF Champions League first round fixture. The People's Elephants lost the first leg 3 0 away and must overturn the deficit to progress to the second round. Still talking football, the German FA Cup, better known as the DFB Poco, continues on NT Lagos Network Center with second round matches built for the 12th and 13th of January to be beamed live. Confirming the development Development, Zona Director NT Lagos Network Center, Lawal Ahmed, revealed that the station is positioned to play a major role in sports content delivery. For the very first time, one out of the so many stations in NTA is chosen to play this critical role of um, entertaining football lovers. And finally, the new permanent secretary of the Ministry of Youth and Sports Development, Nebulisa Anako, has promised to consolidate on the achievements of his predecessor, Gabriela. That will continue where he left along the same line and build on it and innovations going forward is welcome. I'm always open to ideas. The new man in charge who becomes the 13th permanent secretary of the ministry declared his readiness to work tirelessly with the minister Sunday diary in order to achieve the ministry's set goals. And that concludes Sports Update. I am Badi Adeleye. And that concludes Nationwide. We thank you for being a part of it. I also want to remind you to always stand with NTA against rapists and rape. Good evening.